YouTube, what's going on? It's Retrospective, and today we're talking deck building. All right, let's get started. I have top five tips for building a deck in Duel Links. Now, coming from the TCG, those strategies apply in Duel Links as well. But we're gonna work with the format, we're gonna work with the ban list, we're gonna work with the current meta. This will work for any of those. We're gonna deal with the strategy, then the availability of cards, the consistency of your deck, the anatomy of what that deck looks like, what all decks look like, and then the enjoyment factor of what you're going to play. The reason we're doing this is because I'm sure, just like anybody starting out, you feel like this guy, that's you. At the bottom of the tier list getting clapped by like red eyes. And this is everyone else. Let's get into strategy. You need a win condition. You're gonna need combos to be able to get to said win condition. And most important, you're going to need opening moves. Can't always just rely on grit, okay? You need to figure out if your deck is better going on the first turn or the second turn. And based off of that, what moves are you going to make? What combos are you going to come up with to actually get to that win condition? Is your win condition reducing your opponent's life points to zero? Is it getting them to deck out and so they can't draw any more cards? Uh, are you going to get them to zero life points by battle or is that going to be by effect damage? So you need that win condition in mind when you're going in for your opening move to be able to set that up and get your combos going to achieve that end. It's all gotta flow together. So that's the first part. Remember Joey in the anime? totally had like 15 monsters in his deck no spell or trap cards you need to have combos let's get down with availability we're going to talk about the current ban list the promotionals in the events and optimal versus similar all right so considering the availability of the card what you need to keep in mind is the ban list now this changes rather infrequently um, it's really depending on the current meta what cards are getting abused but the ban list is going to tell you whether you can run certain combos together whether you can run a gold sarcophagus and a thunder dragon dark at the same time how many of those you can use or if at all that availability is what you need to keep in mind when you are building your deck Another thing about the availability is that some cards only show up as promotionals, whether they are in events or whether they are a part of like a login uh, special where you get easier access because that card comes from a really old box that has a bunch of cards in it. Uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. Say even if you don't play every day, it might be nice to just keep current with what's happening because a card you may want in that build will show up from time to time in this manner optimal versus similar some cards are top tier as far as just really really easy at getting a strategy or locking an opponent down and then some cards do something similar and quite honestly they're like normals or rares and they have far easier access and what i mean by that we're going to look up fiendish chain and curse of the circle fiendish chain will stop a monster from using its effect so you have to target an effect monster it'll also keep it from attacking now the downside to that is that that monster is actually on the field so if they can remove the trap card itself this monster can still get off its effect especially if it's something that is not a win effect like when it was summoned then you have curse of the circle and target a monster your opponent controls they cannot tribute or use that monster as synchro material. Now tribute means they can't tribute it for like the a trap card or a spell card cost. They can't tribute it for a normal summon. They can't use it for a synchro summon. 
So say somebody puts their Shiranui Spectral Sword on the field, you activate Curse of Circle, now we have this weak monster that is stuck on the field. And that could be a part of another strategy that you have. Maybe you want to use piercing damage on it. Maybe you want to swing over it. Maybe you want to use enemy controller. Curse of the Circle is a similar in that it's used to stop your opponent from being able to do something. You are lowering your opponent's ceiling, giving yourself an opportunity to move forward. So those of you, Fiendish Chain does something in particular, but if you don't have access to it, Take a look at Curse of the Circle because you can potentially stop the big monster from even showing up on the board in the first place. And last but not least, we have Free versus Paid. Or in other words, Time versus your credit card. Think about when you're building your deck, the payoff for that. Think about it in terms of the ban list as well. Is it something that you've seen people just abusing within the current meta? Chances are, if you're coming in on the back end of that, it might not be worth paying for it if Konami is going to come in and then shortchange you by limiting the card. Versus, again, something that's free using gems or something you already have access to. Curse of the Circle would be free in this case, you just have to grind for it. I mean, this chain is something that's accessible, but it was in the selection box, so you definitely have to pay for it if your gems don't help you get lucky. And Dual Links, remember, is Konami unique in the sense that in TCG, you have to spend money, period, in order to play the game unless somebody's going to hand you an old deck. Dual Links is giving you an opportunity to come in without paying a dime to be able to play the game to get into the community. That's just something to keep in mind as well. Uh, it's not always the case that you need something like Fiendish Chain, especially when Konami is saying, here, have access to these cards simply by playing the game. Let's talk consistency. Now, what we're going to be talking about is 20 card decks. Now, I understand that there are a lot of builds or that were used, have been used, that went to 22 or 24 or even 30 try to stay close to 20 cards because what you're impacting in many cases is the consistency the opportunity at which you're going to draw a card that you need now back to the ban list the ban list is definitely going to affect your consistency for instance elemental hero neos brave neos in particular is a very splashable card in many decks so to impact the meta neos fusion was semi-limited to two so as you can see in any neos build you're going to try to put as many neos fusions as possible in the deck and what we have is two we're, we're, we're stuck at two we can do no more so think about that when you're making your your builds that also means we can't run things like enemy controller without impacting Neo's fusion and the flow, the consistency of the deck in a way. Now, the point of consistency is to spam, spam, and more spam. Your opponent is, in most cases, going to try to lower your ceiling, meaning they're going to try to stop your combo, your progress, your momentum. This is why, as you can see in this build, we have three Aqua Dolphins, three Neospace connectors, three convert contacts. What we're doing is we're increasing our ability to search and our ability to get to a Brave Neos or an Aqua Neos. We are trying to make sure that when we are stopped, we have follow-up play. It's not about getting rid of the opponent in turn one, getting rid of the opponent in turn two, whatever. We're looking for the long game. That's what we're after, and that's what you should be after in your duel, consistency and longevity. Those follow-up plays are key to making sure that you can handle pretty much any deck that you come across. And with that is the idea of the minimum threshold. What is the least amount of cards that I can use and stay consistent and then get the dub, right? That's the name of the game. And when I have that in asterisk is because though I have a 20 card deck, we're going to talk more about this later. I've actually built this deck 
with 17 cards in mind. Moving on to the anatomy of a deck. What makes a deck? And I'm not just talking about card type. I'm not talking about trap card, a monster card, a spell card. We're also talking about with this, as far as anatomy, more importantly, is the card's role. And that can be spread out across monsters, traps, or spells. We're talking starter cards. What's the core? What do you need to get your deck, your combo, your strategy popping off? Then we have extenders. Now extenders are the combos. Uh, what are we going to use in conjunction with our core or starter cards that are gonna set up our board, give us an advantage on the field, get us closer to the win condition. Then we have our defense. Now, defense is varied. We can be lowering the opponent's ceiling, like affecting their monster's attack points or uh, switching something into defense, but it can also be something as far as, say, adding life points back to our own count so that we continue moving forward in the duel, being able to draw cards, make new moves. And we also have extra deck potential. Now, the reason that has an asterisk on it is because the extra deck can give access to uh, extenders, it can give us access to defense, it can give us access to uh, what are called bombs, and even removal cards, banishing monsters from the field, bringing up a card that just completely destroys your opponent's field, from, uh, you know, sending their trap cards to the graveyard, sending their monsters to the graveyard, in such a powerful fashion that they have nothing left to do but top deck or just surrender. Now, I have the numbers over here highlighted just to show the balance of this particular build. Now we have for the consistency, we have three of the space connector and three of the aqua dolphin. The connector when summoned can grab either an elemental hero uh, Neos in particular, or the Neospatian, summon it to the field. If we have one of those in the graveyard, then we contribute off the connector and bring that back out of the graveyard. That's setting us up for contact fusion or for uh, any other kind of fusion that we have going on, either it's uh, with polymerization or Neos fusion, or in particular, even for uh, the Miracle Contact. I put Miracle Contact fusion. Naos is at two uh, only because we are running the Grand Merge. Um, we also have uh, the Convert Contact at three because we don't want a dead hand. Um, you could potentially get that still with the three, but what we're looking for, I mean, I have four uh, Neo Spatians. You can take one from your hand when you activate that card and then send one from the uh, deck to the graveyard. So it's also setting up combo so that you can use the uh, miracle contact uh, fusion combo um, or you can set up using the dragon keeper of magic so that you can go ahead and ditch a card say take out the naos from the graveyard put it on the field and then set up for a contact fusion in that way and then we also um, have our defense cards that's why the neo spatian is in there with Debunk and Chthonian Polymer. Uh, just using a weak monster to then tribute off to take the opponent's fusion monster because fusions are getting stronger in the game uh, because you can still fuse monsters when they're face down. Um, debunk, of course, uh, to deal with the hand traps or anything of the sort where a monster can special summon from the hand. And then a uh, hummingbird not only for getting back life points, but also for setting up for our Storm Neos, uh, which is the bomb in this deck, to be able to just wipe the back row, 3,500 attack monster, usually 3,000, but with particular skills, you can get up to 3,500 and then be able to swing over most monsters in the game. Uh, and what I wanna do now is just show a clip of how that actually looks because not only is this deck trying to swing over but it's also hand control
All right, and we are coming down to the last point, which is your ability to enjoy the deck. Now we're talking about why you're playing. That's part of your enjoyment. Know what you're doing with that build. Uh, are you trying to, again, get rid of the deck? Are you just trying to one turn kill? Are you trying to just test for a new strategy? Have the purpose of play in mind, have your flow of play and style of play in tandem. So again, like if you're playing Volcanic and you know that it's about effect damage, have a deck that's going to match that by being able to flow through it. Be able to take over your opponent's monsters with a Lava Golem. Be able to uh, take one of their monsters that swings in, send it back to the hand. Build up the style that you have, if that's the goal. Uh, enjoy it with community. You have so much more fun uh, when you're able to just hop online, uh, find a community from a streamer, one of your favorite streamers, and be able to play, be able to share ideas, be able to deck build, will increase your ability to enjoy the game. Last but not least, I think is the most important tournament play. The competitive edge of this game has and will be there. It's the meta defining aspect of the game. You really want to be able to at least take an opportunity to play one or two, uh, especially if there are tournaments that don't necessarily have money on the line or say even free prizes or something like that that you can have access to. Get in there, it really shows you the meat and potatoes of the meta and what's really making the most impact. King of Games is an awesome climb. It's a very cool notch on your belt, but once you reach that threshold, many people end up finding themselves just not wanting to play anymore. They've reached that plateau. Tournaments will fuel that competitive edge that you have. And that's it guys, those are the top five tips. Now, as far as the anatomy, I do wanna make a separate video for that because there's a lot more to get involved with in how to go about building a deck and, and seeing how cards fit into those different roles. We'll save that for later. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Uh, please, uh, it would do me a great honor if you would leave a like, if you would share it, and if you would go ahead and subscribe. This is not the uh, last video that I'm making, and I'm looking forward to building a community centered around dual links focusing on these deck building strategies but let me know what you think uh, what are your tips when it comes to deck building i would love to hear from you and see what you've got always incorporating new ideas until next time have fun